Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today's topic is SPI, or SBI, depending on uh, who's pronouncing it. Uh, as I've mentioned uh, previously, uh, this uh, video on SPI is a continuation in the series of the Parallel Bus, uh, the UART uh, Bus, uh, the I squared C bus and now spy. So if anything I discuss in here doesn't make sense, please refer to back to the other videos where I've explained some of the stuff in more detail. So SPI stands for the uh, Serial Peripheral Interface. SPI is kind of the halfway point between I squared C and UART. Uh, SPI is far less complicated than I squared C, but is a little more capable uh, than you are. Uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to discuss the structure, uh, the packet structure of SPI, uh, whether it's a synchronous versus asynchronous, half duplex versus full duplex, and uh, its wiring, which uh, there is just a little bit of trickiness about it. This is what a simple uh, SPI packet looks like. You have a data line, and there's actually two data lines, but we'll talk more about that in wiring. Uh, the data line is called MOSI, and this stands for Master Out Slave In. Uh, the other data line that I don't ha uh, have pictured here is uh, MISO, Master In Slave Out. And then you have a clock line. The clock line is provided by the master. And if you haven't guessed already, the clock line means that uh, the spy bus is uh, synchronous, unlike UART, which does not have a clock line. So uh, the way uh, spy works is that the uh, slave uh, reads in the uh, data bit that is on the MOSI line every rising uh, edge of the clock. So what you start off with is both of the clock and data lines are idling high. The master then uh, pulls the line low and then right where the rising edge of the clock is, you kind of line it up, is where the bit is read. So this is read as a zero. Then the next line here, you kind of go, this is read as a one. Right here, this is read as a zero. This one is read as a one. Zero, 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 one. And then finally at the end, uh, both the clock and data line go idle as they sit high. Couple of things to notice. First of all, unlike both SPI, I'm sorry, unlike both I squared C and UART, to send eight bits, you only send the eight bits. There's no extra anything in here. There's no AX or NAX, there's no start bit, end bit, there's nothing, it's just 8 bits get pushed out. Uh, this makes the bus very, very simple and uh, fairly fast. It can go about as fast as I squared C, uh, maybe a little faster, but I, I personally wouldn't push it that far. Also, uh, with the clock line, the you don't require any synchronization. So the SPI bus is actually fairly easy to implement in hardware. You don't need any kind of extra special timing units or anything of the sort. You just listen to the clock line or you just generate the clock line and then push the bits out. Looking at the package structure of SPI, SPI seems pretty simple. The problem or maybe not necessarily problem, but the trickiness of SPI is the way uh, the internals of SPI work. And they use the principle of a shift register. So inside the SPI module, you want to send out a, you know, a byte. So you load that byte into uh, the internal SPI register. So let's say you load the number four. So this would be 
zero 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 one zero zero. Right, uh, ones, twos, uh, fours. So this is the number four. So now that spy received this number, it then uh, begins to communicate. So it toggles the, the clock line and it sets the uh, uh, Mosi line, the master out slave, in to match this first uh, register's place. This is the uh, most significant bit of the number. Once the clock line has toggled one, uh, the uh, module then bit shifts the entire number uh, over one place in that direction. So then this uh, number four becomes zero, 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 one, zero, zero, zero. Notice how this number one has shifted one place over this way. This is the idea of a shift register. It's able to shift the numbers. So during the generation of the next clock cycle now again uses the spot to command the uh, data line so then this zero gets loaded in and you know this will continue until the one is sitting in the spot so the one zero 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 right one two three four five six seven eight Ooh. Too many zeros, whoops. Until you get to this number, and now this one is sitting in the most significant place, and then this gets pushed out onto the line, and then, you know, this will continue until all eight places, uh, un, until all eight uh, bits of the number have been sent out the data line. How does spy communicate bidirectionally? This is where things get really interesting because both the master and the slave uh, work on the principle of the shift register and it's actually super clever the way they do it. So as I mentioned previously, you load a number into the uh, register for the master. Let's just, let's call this the master and then this is gonna be the slave. <coughs> And then the slave also loads a number into its own register. So just to make this kind of easier to see, let's say this is gonna be one, one, and then it's gonna be followed by all zeros. So as the master uh, gets ready to transmit, it pulls the clock line low. While the clock line is low, it loads this most significant bit onto the Mosi line. But at the same time, the slave, sensing that the clock line has gone low, will load the most significant bit out onto the MISO line, the master in, slave out. So then the clock line's low. As soon as the clock line goes high, the uh, slave reads in the most significant bit coming from the master, and the master reads in the most significant bit coming from the slave. It's a bi-directional exchange that happens at the same time. This process continues until the master has shifted out all of the bits it wants to send to the slave, and the slave has shifted all the bits out to the master. So after the very first transmission, what this turns into is zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one. This one that gets tacked on the end here is the one that came from the slave. And what the slave gets is one, zero, 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 zero. The zero at the end here is the zero that came from right here. So this process then continues up until the number that started here is sitting in this register and the number that started here is sitting in this register. The, the let's say, disadvantage, maybe, that a spy has, a, not over, since it's a disadvantage, uh, over I squared C, is that for other than the idea of this exchange, 
of the, the two registers essentially swapping. There are no other provisions for how SPI communicates. Everything else has to be done and set up by the uh, end user. So if you're using a, let's say, um, a wireless module that communicates with SPI, you have to look at the data sheet and then the way you command the master has to match what the uh, spy module, I'm sorry, the wireless module is expecting. If you have uh, two microcontrollers that are talking to each other, you have to essentially write your protocol from scratch because you don't know uh, outright what pieces go where, etc. There's just bytes flying down the line. The most the basic kind of wiring for SPI is two modules talking to each other. So you have a master, which with SPI you always have to have a master. The master is what provides the clock line. And then you have a slave device. And the slave device will have pins that match uh, the master. So you have master out, slave in, master in slave out and you have the clock line and all of these lines just connected directly uh, across like that listen this is the the very most basic kind of connection the thing that i've omitted from this is spy has another line which is the slave select line the slave select line isn't 100% necessary in this kind of setup. I say 100% necessary. Uh, some devices, even in a single one-to-one -one connection, will use the slave select line. If you're not using the slave select line, let me... SS stands for slave select, and if you've never seen this bar, this bar is an inversion sign or active low. So for, to activate the slave select line, the line has to be pulled low. So in a setup where you only have a single master talking to a single slave and the slave select line isn't used for anything special, you would just go ahead and ground the line. In other cases where the slave select line is used for things, for example, uh, let's say uh, communication is interrupted halfway through, so only half the bits have been shifted back and forth on the bus. Toggling the slave select line can reset the slave to make sure that it always starts with a fresh uh, set of bits sitting in the register. So in cases like that, you would have a slave select line on the master and then the two lines get tied together and then we get rid of this ground so then the master will pull the slave select line low to activate the slave and then go ahead and communicate so the clock line sends the clock in this direction master out slave in sends data in this direction and then master in slave out sends data in this direction as you can tell the spy bus is a full duplex bus. Communication happens in both directions at the same time without interfering with each other. So then how do you hook up multiple slaves? It becomes very, very, very simple. You have all of the same kinds of pins. So the MOSI line gets connected to the MOSI pin. Uh, the MISO line gets connected to the MISO pin. The clock line gets connected to the uh, SCK line. And then the master will now have a second slave select line. So this is going to be SS1 negation. And then this line connects to the second slave. So now, if the master wants to talk to slave number one, it will pull the, uh, this line low and leave this line high. Sorry, S, S. So the slave will be quiet and the slave will uh, talk. And then whenever the master is done with slave number one and wants to talk to slave number two, it 
pulls this line high, pulls this line low, and now the master talks to the slave. And this setup can go as far, you know, as big as you want, almost, uh, uh, providing that the master has enough uh, slave select pins to do that. Here is a different layout for wiring up SPY. Uh, this layout makes use of the idea of a shift register in the SPY module. So the master connects the master out slave in line to the first slave, which is the master out slave in. The tricky approach here is that the output of the uh, first slave, the master in slave out, is connected up to the master out slave in of the second slave. And then this continues up through how many uh, different slaves that you have. And then finally, the very last slave brings the, uh, the line back around. The way this works is that, let's say, uh, a good example for this is a LED driver module, that each slave controls so many LEDs with a number that's shifted into it. What the master has to do is generate a packet which can set all of the uh, LED driver modules at the same time. It then pulls the uh, slave select line low so all of the slaves get ready to receive information and then it will push byte by byte by byte the information uh, to set all of these uh, slave modules at the same time. So the, sl the master has to send the byte that's going to end up in the very last slave first and then in an inverted order send the rest of them so it'll send the byte for uh, so let's say slave one first, for slave two second, and for slave three third. So that byte actually will first go into slave three, then uh, when the byte for uh, slave two is sent, this byte will work its way into slave two, and when finally when the byte for slave three is sent, this byte works its way into slave one, and then when the uh, slave select line is pulled high again, all of the slaves accept the uh, data that's now sitting in them. Uh, this allows for very simple wiring and uh, is highly expandable. So this, this system is very, very, very flexible. Where things get tricky with wiring SPY is when there's not a clear division of who is a master and who is a slave. This comes up in the form of if you have two microcontrollers that need to talk to each other. Either microcontroller could be a master, and if one is the master, the other is the slave, or vice versa. So if you have two microcontrollers that are both labeled in the uh, MOSI, MISO, and SCK uh, style, uh, these pins don't actually correlate to what they're supposed to be because master out in both microcontrollers would be an output and master in would both be an input and you can't, you know, two outputs can't talk to each other. So in microcontrollers, uh, it's often that instead of using the MISO MOSI uh, acronyms, they use SDO and SDI standing for spy data out and spy data in. This can get very, very confusing because uh, these pins uh, you know, don't have that nice mosi miso correlation. So if you have two microcontrollers and both have an SDO and an SDI uh, pins, you get that same kind of inversion that you saw with uh, UART, where the spy data out of the master will go to the spy data in of the slave, and the spy data in of the master will go to the spy data out of the slave, like that. The uh, clock line and the slave select line don't need this kind of inversion, like that. So be careful if you're wiring up 
uh, two microcontrollers together and the uh, spy lines uh, so don't have a very uh, clear labeling system. Also something to note and that is the spy modules are self-clocked. Uh, if you refer back to my video on I2C, I2C is self-clocked meaning that the I2C module uh, generates the clock and then actually reads its own clock to then work the module. Uh, SPY works in exactly the same fashion where the uh, master generates a clock but then it actually reads its own clock to operate the device. So this isn't quite, uh, there's no such thing as clock stretching for SPY but uh, this is something to be aware of because you can run into instances where a poor, con you know, a misconfiguration of a module can lead to some problems. I really hope that you learned something both from the SPI bus and from uh, the parallel I2C and UART buses discussed in my previous videos. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to comment down below or uh, email me. Uh, thank you for watching.